Okay, so this this uh, is going to be on like relation, having a romantic relationship with someone who's potentially suicidal. Um, okay, so one of the one of the things that I you know like Hawkins did a, a book Power versus Force, um, and the thing is like if I'm having a romantic relationship with someone. Uh, I, but the nature of a romantic relation tends to mean that your power drops. Um, you know, like when you have a spiritual mentor, they tend to be detached and so uh, tend not to be hooked into the drama that goes on in another person. And because they're detached and they're not emotionally involved with the other person, um, their spiritual power, their spiritual connection, their, their ability to give guidance and not be detached from whatever happens to the person is very strong. Now if you're in a romantic relationship and you're trying to save another person, um, I mean of course it's possible that you, you're still detached, but I'd say 99 times out of 10 you'll have attachments and want to save them or feel emotionally upset when they're, when they're upset, you know, you won't be able to just drop it, you know. <clears throat> and um, so power, you know, the power remains, the power remains when there is, I mean, the ultimate power is love without attachment, uh, without, in, without emotional attachment. Uh, so that's ultimate power. And that power has, has immense power for miracles. Uh, and uh, but when there is the more that one is emotionally invested in saving and rescuing someone, the less power you've got. And in fact, so it becomes like you know. And if you're really like someone suicidal and you really want to rescue them, uh, it can be like you've got no power. It's like two empty people trying to, you know. It's like there isn't the power there. So it's like one goes down and you go down with them. You uh, you end up being suicidal, guilty. And, and that's because there's too much emotional investment and, and attachment uh, and you're being unhooked by it. So the power goes up the more detached one is. So usually for me then it's like uh, if I feel I'm trying to help someone, I start to get emotionally attached to them, I then become not a good person to help them because, you know, it's like I've lost my power because I'm emotionally hooking in. I'm not, when you're upset, I'm upset now. And when you're, when you're doing well, I'm happy. That's not good for being someone to rescue. You haven't got, you haven't got the power any longer to rescue them. Mm -hmm. so, so it's like now you're, you know, they're having problems wanting you to rescue them and you haven't got any power to rescue them. You haven't got power to rescue yourself. You're, they're in a roller coaster and you're in a roller coaster. Now, if it can be even worse if they want you to be the thing that rescues them when you're emotionally attached to them because you haven't got power and they don't want to go to someone who's detached from the situation. So then that becomes a negative spiral. So um, thing, and everything, everything ultimately is context. I can't give any strict guide, guidelines because it can be different in different contexts. But generally speaking, if I was trying to help someone uh, and I was uh, in a romantic relationship with them or I was there, you know, and then they became, and I knew they were, suddenly realized they're suicidal, and they want me to rescue them, then I know what, what they really need is um, someone to guide them with power. I'm no longer available. I mean, I can be there as an emotional support, but I haven't got the power any longer to rescue because I'm emotionally attached to them. So, I, I, you know, it's like I might, I probably want to rescue them, but now I'm, I want to rescue them from the level of my ego. And my ego has no power to rescue them once I become emotionally attached to them. How do we know you're emotionally attached to them? They feel happy, you feel happy. They feel like suicidal. Now you're, in, you're traumatized and you're emotional. So you're not, you haven't got detachment. So you haven't got the, actually now it means you haven't got the power to rescue them. And so you can be there as a boyfriend, but you haven't got the power to rescue them. But what if someone, um, says like, I only want you to rescue me, I'm, I'm, your, boy, you know, I'm your boyfriend, and I don't want anyone else to intervene. And uh, if it's not you, then I'm going to commit suicide. That's quite heavy. And uh, again, um, for me, um, first of all, I think the most important person to save initially is me. 
Because if I'm so attached, I need spiritual power to give me guidance to do the right thing in the situation. I think 12-step groups are quite good because if you've got a spiritual mentor, uh, they'll be able to give you the guidance to do, to do something you may, you may un be unwilling to do. Um, I mean, in 12-step groups, people die all the time uh, and they're not ready to give up their addictions. Mm -hmm. And that's just, just a regular thing that lots of people see and know. And they have a relative capacity to stay detached from that and carry on helping others, but know that some people are not ready and they're probably going to go downhill. There's not much they can do about it. Uh, you're drinking non-stop. You can't stop drinking. Uh, are, you, are you willing to do what it takes to get well? No, I'm not. I just want to do what I want to do, um, then, you know, it's like, you know, you, you, they have to take responsibility, they have to take the first steps of responsibility, and then you have to have a, a person who's going to mentor them with spiritual power and detachment to help them out of it. So, what if you've got, now, if you're trying to help someone who's not willing to take personal responsibility to get out of it from a person who can help them, and you're trying to rescue them and they don't want to be rescued by someone they want you to rescue them, but you're attached to them. You're in like a, a catch-22, because you no longer have your emotion attached to them. You're not, you, can't, you can't rescue them. And, and then you can say, like, well, why don't you go to a professional or, or get a spiritual sponsor? So, well, I'm not willing to do that. So, in a, in a way, they're addicted to you, but they're not willing to take personal responsibility. They have to take, they have to take guidance from someone who's got the power to help mm. them. And you have, you know, like, if I become emotionally attached to anyone, I haven't got power to take them out of hell because I'm now emotionally hooked into them. So I'm like, power, I'm powerless. I haven't got God's power to help that individual. If I'm detached with someone and I've got a spiritual connection, I can give them the guidance. Okay, you want to get well, you're in hell. The first thing I need you to do is start praying, start step one, start writing, go to a meeting. If they've got that willingness, they're taking, person, they're taking step mm. one, personal responsibility. I'm going to do what it takes for me to get well. Now, you know, from a relationship addiction point of view, when they are wanting a romantic person to save them, they're probably in a romantic addiction type thing, where they want, a, they want their saviour to be a boyfriend. Now, boyfriends aren't, you know, that's the thing of addiction. Like, I want... I want, an al I, want a, I want alcohol to save me, I want drugs to save me, I want a romantic partner to save me. <coughs> um, and, uh, but a rom romant you know, when, when someone's projecting and wanting a romantic partner to <coughs> save them, that is, not, that is not the solution to spiritual illness. Because when you're projecting, romantic person save me, you know, it's not, you're not letting God intervene because you're going for a saviour in terms of a romantic partner rather than, sur than surrendering your ego inflation to get access to real power. So it, it, by, by nature, that she's not going to the right source to, to help her. She has to, it's like, you know, when you're in hell and you're spiritually bankrupt, like you don't need a, a, a relationship to save you. You need a spiritual awakening or, or, a, ther or, or, a, or a therapist or a medical professional, whatever psychiatrist but um, but when you're spiritually bankrupt you know a, a human savior in terms of a romantic partner is not the right is the wrong projection now what if you're in a catch-22 and you know my gut let's say my I've got a girlfriend it's not true of course I, I haven't got a girlfriend but anyway I've got a girlfriend <laughs> and just in case people think you're talking about myself and, uh, <laughs> You know, I get like commiserated on YouTube. Like, oh, sorry, yeah. I've got a suicidal girlfriend. Give me advice, but anyway. You start getting fan letters. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Anyway, so if I had if I had a suicidal <laughs> suicidal girlfriend, um, you know, I, I would go to a spirit. I mean, I take my spiritual mental, but generally speaking, I know that I can't be the savior. I cannot be the savior. I am romantically attracted to this woman. I can't. I can no longer be a savior for this woman. I haven't got the power. You know, um, and I'm telling her, like, get a sponsor, or get a psychiatrist. And she's saying, no, you've got to be my, you're my right partner, you save me. So then, you know, the thing, I mean, if, I mean, let me put it another way. What well, first guiding someone who's in that situation? I, you know, there's one thing I know from 12 programs, is like, sometimes you've got to let people hit their rock bottom. And, uh, and that might sound cruel, because if I haven't got the capacity to save them, 
I've actually seen something happen, and I can't give it, you know, they might commit suicide and die, you know, you might say, like, look, I can't say, you've got to get professional help, and you say, you know, I haven't got the power, and they go, oh, you're abandoning me, and then the next day they're dead. That's possible. I mean, I have a different way. I'm going to take a lot of flack on this, but I'll say it anyway. So, I mean, it's like some people, you can't save them, and there's nothing that's going to save them. They just don't, they're not ready yet. Their soul is not ready yet to take step one, to admit, take responsibility, to look at their ego mechanisms and let those go. They, you know, they have their projections. I want a boyfriend to save me. I want to be famous before I'm saved. You know, that can't, that leads to greater ego inflation. It's not, and they're not ready to go for a different answer, like a spiritual answer. There's nothing you can do. Um, and uh, you can try and bail them out as often as often, but it's some, I think some souls are destined to leave, and there's nothing, they're not ready yet to take, to, to, you know, there's nothing you can do for them. And you're going to go down the pan with them. In some situations, if I was a mentor, I'd say, look, there's nothing you can do for this person. You're going down the hill. You know, you have to detach and let them go and leave them up to God and surrender them. Otherwise, you're going to go down the hill as well. So I know you want to save them, and you're trying everything you do, but you're going to, you know, I, since I've been seeing you in the last year, you'll become mentally unstable. And as your guide, I'm going to tell you, look, you have to detach and let her go, and whatever happens, happens, I'm sorry, but otherwise you're going to go down the pan as well. So sometimes, it, that might sound very cruel, but sometimes that might be the right thing. Um, also, I mean, I know from my thing is... Um, the thing is, I don't want to interrupt at that point. And I, I'm, I'm, I know you're yeah, okay, yeah. okay should, I put it off? should I put it off? Do you want me to switch it off? No, it's okay. okay yeah. um, you can... You can say, okay, this is the point, I've done all I can, I've pointed you in the right direction, so I'm not capable of saving you, I'm not capable, I haven't got the capacity. Yeah emotionally, professionally, spiritually, mm -hmm. to give you what you're asking. Mm -hmm. And I can point you in all these directions, and for whatever reason those doors are closed, or you're closing those doors, and it could be a bit of both. You let somebody go, and it could be a hard, tough decision that could be perceived as being cruel when you don't intend that. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can be doing it from the point of most kindness. Mm -hmm. If the worst happens and that person does decide, that's it, I'm copying out, I've had enough, I'm mm. gone. That's not devoid of consequences. There, are still, there is still a consequence for the people who are left behind, namely me or whoever else. They're still mm. going to suffer the guilt or the what-ifs mm. or the hypotheticals of having made that decision and done that letting mm -hmm. go. And those consequences can be, are going to be... As much as, you say, as much as it can almost be quite glib, well, if you don't want to take the solution, then you want your own go away and do it, there's still going to be a potential well, well, that's the thing of having a spiritual mentors to back you mm. up. Because, it's, because it's, of course you're going to go into guilt. Like mm. if I'd done something else, or just told her one more time, please visit a professional. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, shouldn't have, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't have let her go, because I should have kept saying it and she would have done it. But then that's why you have a spiritual mentor, because the spiritual yeah. mentor knows you and says, look, you have to let this go. And the other yeah. thing I want to add to that as well is, mm -hmm. from our position, yeah. and I know it's not everybody in this room, of having the experience and the access to the 12 step yes. programs, there are those, it's like when the, with the state of mental health services in the UK and the absolute inaccessibility, the difficulty is to get onto that, in, onto that and the, the 12 step programs are geared specifically towards compulsive addictive behaviour. Not and, and not all mental health issues. While I believe everything has a spiritual solution, mm. not all issues will fit into the twelve-step framework. Yeah. Not everybody is having an addictive compulsive issues. Some people are just very very unwell, and you don't know. You 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 kind of see that somebody is. I mean, my position, and I'm trying to not be too specific. It's like when when I can see her looking for solutions. She's on websites such as meetup.com. Mm. She's reading the right books. She's reading the Louise Hay type mm. material. She's looking for her empowerment. But she, and she's knowing that that has to come from her on some level of her own experience. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't seem to be there. Mm. 
there seems to be a lack and it's like my, there's my frustration of I don't know where to what direction to put you in I know you I know if I point you in the right direction you'll go in the right direction okay but I don't know what that direction is because it seems like there's nothing available now I may be completely wrong there oh. because I know that I'm not the savior and I think she knows that I'm not the savior mm -hmm. but I'm still having the I'm still be I want, I'm going to use a term, it's, it sounds like a bit of a harsh term to use, yeah. because it's not, but it's, I feel in some ways like I'm her emotional tampon that's soaking up all her anguish and all her grief and all her pain that she's offloading, because she hasn't got anywhere to go and share that. Okay. And, and, and so it's not quite this, I'm expected to be her saviour, but it is I am taking and witnessing the consequences of where she is at mentally. Yeah. And that's a lot of that is the difficulty as well. So, so yeah, it's not quite that, but you're all, it's on the right track. Well, you know, if I had a, if I, let's say I had someone, if I had a girlfriend that was suicidal and she was taking my advice mm. and I was around to get out, I would say to her, like, first you've got to get all the medical thing, you can try and get yeah, the yeah, project. Yeah. And the second thing I'd say, and I'll share, share my stories to get, to get a 12 step sponsor. Mm. Now, I just quickly share my story. Like I, I got into Hawkins, and I wasn't an alcoholic. And uh, the only thing that Hawkins said was AA. Yeah. So I didn't know. I thought, well, I'm not an alcoholic, but I knew I had to work a 12-step program. So uh, I went to AA, and I just asked people, like, I just want to work the steps for the spiritual reason. I'm not an alcoholic. Yeah. And I got a sponsor, uh, the very first person I asked sponsor. And there was that thing of mystically wanting that and getting a sponsor. If you explain it yeah. and you ask them, I want to just go, like, you will find somebody. Yeah, I've uh, got, I've got an, like, there's something in my head that's popped into my mind yeah. in the last hour or so, and that's ACA. Yeah. And, and so, but cause it does, that doesn't actually speak about addiction. No. But yeah, so it's just, it's, it's looking, for my own, I know for myself that the best I can do is to work on my own spirituality. Yeah. Because it's like, and it, it relates a little bit to the previous question you were answering, the previous yeah. thing. It's, I'm kind of aware, I think, that if I keep my own, if I work on my own energy, my own spiritual, charging up my own spiritual batteries, yes. then the things that I need kind of fall into my path, That's right. and the things that I don't need will fall away. Yeah. Regardless of what, it's less about my own action and more about my own vibration. That's right. And I kind of know that all I've got, the re all I can really do now is stay focused on my own. But it doesn't, it doesn't eliminate the fact that there's this drama going on that I'm doing my best to detach from. But it keeps like it's, it's like here, here I am. Here's the drama. You want this? Here you want. Come on, come, come to me, drama. Come on, you, you, you're beckoning this in. It's gonna. So, so yeah. And, and, but like, it's like, I, I. I mean, Wayne Dyer, while Wayne Dyer never really produced any original material, he was a good researcher. <laughs> yes. You know, he kind of yeah. called everybody else's yeah. material. Yeah. I was. It, yeah. it was very much like, one of the things he used to say a lot of, there is a spiritual solution to every yeah. problem. Yes. It's just, in this case, maybe I do know what it is and I can't, I'm quite connected, but it feels like I don't know what that spiritual solution is. Well, the, spirit, the spiritual yeah. solution, I think, I mean, if you decide to stay in the relationship, you have to raise your consciousness. Yeah, and yes. um, uh, I have to. Well, I think whether I decide to stay or not, yeah. I don't particularly. God, I hope she doesn't see it. See this, <laughs> but I don't particularly want this relationship. But I feel like the wrong thing would be to back out at this time. But yeah, raising my consciousness in that situation, I think, is going to be the paramount. I mean, I would, I would issue. strongly um, a few things. I strongly, strongly uh, encourage Amanon. Mm -hmm. Because um, when you're in a room full of people with, with nutty relation, in nutty relationships, you start getting the spiritual power, and God can use. Because you know, there, you know, like Alanon is just like a bunch of people uh, with relatives or romantic partners who are addicts, and they desperate, all of them want to desperately save the other person. So you yeah. get a lot of spiritual power, and a few slaps around your face. Uh, about trying to rescue people, yeah. Um, but you get more power because you detach. So you detach from wanting to, to rescue them. And um, I don't know, the you know God did not create the drama in relationships, so it's not real. I yeah. place I place the drama in my relationship into God's infinite light and love, and I pray for miracles and transcendence. Um, 
There is a motion, it's anonymous. Well, I don't know. No, it's it's I've got no idea it's existing. It, there, there's one, there's one meeting by it. Okay, we can try that if that's good. Uh, emotions yeah. anonymous. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll not, for, not for your fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, you want to get power, and um, it's going to be hard work if you stay in there anyway, yeah. because mm. um, detaching mm. and mopping up all that energy and mm. keeping your vibration, mm. uh, it, it gives you a lot of food for working on stuff. I yes. mean, uh, how you're wanting to rescue, <laughs> yeah, do you, yes. you know, do you get emotionally, up, do you get emotionally <laughs> uh, <laughs> upset, so you can pr make all of that meaningless. Yeah. Go to the observer, go to Anandan, uh, and have your spiritual mentors. But um, um, some people do actually, I, I have seen this, you know, like I've got emotionally attached to people wanting to rescue them. And then I know that I'm starting to go down, and then I let them go, because I know from my own survival I let them go. Yeah. And then I find that they, get, they do fine without me trying to rescue them. I mean, it's like, you know, I go, oh, I really want to rescue this person, I really want to rescue them, and then I'm, I'm feeling nutty. I've had the opposite experience as well, and I mean, there was, a, there was somebody I, many, many years ago, there was somebody in the relationship I let go of, and yeah. I think she's kind of been on lifelong medication yeah. since that ended, and I'm like, I mean, it's, 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 I've had, I haven't had the consequences of somebody deciding to check out completely, Yeah. it's, it's not, that's not, while I think that's a very nice idea, the fact that I'll let them go and that tough love thing will make them go and, oh, I've, I, I've been tough loved and now I'm going to sort myself out. It doesn't always, no. unfortunately, it doesn't always go no. that way. No. It's, uh, yeah, it's, so it's, so. A, it's a surreal, you know. Mm. I mean, you have, to, you have to follow your heart and I would take spiritual guidance um, and uh, also uh, monitor how you're doing with it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Cool.